federal high court in Calabar has denied bail to Joseph Odok, a Nigerian lawyer who was arrested on September 26 on the charges of terrorism. Interesting. Now, his arrest and incarceration, however, is believed to have been led to by his constant criticisms of the Kosovo state government. Now, this case is similar to that of Agwa Jalingu, a journalist and publisher of Crossover Watch, who is being held in the same Calabar and has been charged with treason over a report of about an alleged diversion of 500 million naira by the Cross River State Governor. Do we need to beam a spotlight on Cross River State Government and what is the Constitution's definition of terrorism or treason? Well, I'm not a lawyer. Fortunately for us, we have one here. And uh, Raymond Kanebe is still here in the studio. Thank He's you, a lawyer. Man. And we have Dick Bolayoko, a political analyst. I I'm going to start with you, Raymond. Yes. <laughs> I don't know the law because I, I mean, I have an idea, but you are a student of law. So okay. where does terrorism become a, a, an issue when you're criticizing a governor? When you, how do you become a terrorist as a critic of a government? And how does a report on missing money become treason explain to us please well uh, there's no explanation to do there is a clear case of calling a dog a bad name just to hang it because it, there's a disconnect between the actual act and the offense for which he's been f charged with right why is he in custody if there is no connect no what i mean the disconnect and what i mean by disconnect is uh, uh, that you can't tie the you can't tie the act to the offense but then law enforcement agencies uh, reserve the right to frame a charge in any way they like. And that then is for the defense or for the accused person to not go to court and actually defend uh, himself. And in a very, uh, in, in a fair judicial system, such a charge should be thrown out without, uh, without any uh, much scruples from the defense because it's a clearly, uh, uh, it's clearly uh, uh, a, a watery one because the constitution does not define what is terrorism. It's actually defined by the Terrorism uh, Prevention Act that was passed into law sometime in 2015, thereabout. And then it actually defines terrorism as any act which is calculated to instill fear, cause f uh, fear in the, in the populace, and to actually uh, dis uh, disrupt governments. And you understand. So but there's no way you connect the ingredient of terrorism to uh, the act of writing a, a, a new story uh, alleging that the government was involved in um, uh, um, perhaps appropriation of misappropriation, misappropriation of funds uh, fund to the tune of 500 um, million naira. So for me, I see, I see it as a case of calling a dog a bad name to hang it. And I'm sure by the time the matter gets to trial, the, the charge should be. I'll tell you what, well, um, a federal high court in Calabar today, mm. well, yesterday, had denied bail to Joseph Ordok. Uh, and um, he, well, this is what his lawyer said. His lawyer, Oliver Osang, said um, that the court presided by Justice Simon Amobeda ruled against their bail application on the grounds that they had not shown exceptional circumstance in which he should be granted bail. Now, Ordok's bail application was based on health grounds. The judge, however, said that the court was open to receiving any fact available from the defense counsel that he could lead to a review of its ruling on bail uh, um, application. Now, Osang is still saying that they will pursue the bail application. I'm, I don't know how the court system works no, yes, here. Yes. But if you, from what you have said, this should have been long thrown out of the court. Yes. So what exactly and that's why I qualified that as in a fair system that such a charge should so not. So you're telling me that the system. I'm not. I'm not reaching that conclusion. Not I'm not reaching the conclusion yet. But, but could let me, it let be me said that what is happening in the courts and within the government mm. or the powers between the judiciary and the mm. executive in Cross River State is not fair? Well, you see, for it, a, it's a yes or no question. No, so. it's it's not. You know, it's a very. Why well, are you uh, trying to be diplomatic no, about it's, this? No, it's a because I'm, it's uh, either it's fair or not. You're saying in a fair system. The, 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 the uh, the yes, and I'm not. I'm speaking for my constituency. I'm trying to be fair to the judges here. You see, a bill, a, a, no matter what, no matter what what it is, judges are meant to be aloof. They must not descend into the arena, even though a judge knows that this guy did not do this stuff, right? If he knows, off, off record, when he sits as a judge over that course, he's meant to, once he puts on, does his, his, his wigs, 
and gown. He's meant to be aloof. He pretends as if he does not know any other fact Where beyond what has been presented. Justice and fair play. No, as I'm coming. Come in all of beyond this. what has been presented to him in open court. Now the judge has said that the bail application, that the grounds upon which it is predicated, they are not sufficient enough. Why the grant of bail is discretionary, Good. the party who seeks bail must place sufficient materials before the court to justify the grant of that equitable remedy. Now the judge has said, what you have brought to me are not sufficient enough. But then if you do the needful, I will still consider this application. So I'm thinking perhaps if they are bringing the application on health grounds, the question will be, does the facility the, where he's being retained, don't they have the necessary uh, to checkmate such a health issue? If they, they don't, then the court will now say, okay, where you are being kept, they don't have this facility to handle the situation. So keeping you there will be at a detriment of your health because you have to be alive for us before you can stand trial. So I don't know if they have attached those documents to actually convince the judge that this young man should be admitted to bail pending determination of his trial. I don't, we don't have all those facts. So that's why we, too, we shouldn't be too hasty to take side whether the judge is being fair or whether he's not being fair here. Okay, I'm, com I'm coming to you, Mr. Dick, but, um This is not the first time the Cross River State Government is supposedly taking advantage of, a, 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 let's say, a report or reports that are being put out there or allegations. In a normal world, if an allegation is put out, and of course, if a journalist or anybody is writing or criticizing, they have their own facts, should there not be counterfacts brought against a person or a person, a suit filed against that person in court instead of an illegal detention? You see, it's unfortunate I don't envy the bench now. Because while they were being assailed by the executive. Unfortunately, unfortunately, the lawyers are also harassing the judges. And unfortunately, that is exactly what is playing out. I remember the 19, under Abacha, when uh, Abiola was arrested and was charged to court. The then counsel was uh, Chief G.O.K. Ajayi, very fantastic lawyer but quiet, gentle person. And a section of the bar believed that the man was too gentle in the way he was approaching the case, that they should have scattered everything. And unfortunately, that is what is being played, what is playing out now. As of today, nobody knows the evidences before the prosecutor or prosecution that took Jardinko to court. By time, because the case has not even started. What they are doing now is the modus operandi, the time of whether it is a secret trial, whether joy, uh, witnesses, identity should be uh, yes. kept in camera. It is the law. If the section of the Niger Constitution is very clear that for certain reasons, some trial can be in, in, in secret. Some certain reasons, the identity of witnesses can be kept secret. It is in the law. Well, all these things we are seeing on media, and Nigerians are jumping at it. Nobody knows the reason why Galingo has been tied to court on treason. Because if it is just because of that newspaper publication, then some of these matters will have been presented before the judge that refused him bail. It is the judge that refused the bail, not that uh, somebody is just keeping up with Galingo. Now to the case of the lawyer, like the lawyer has expressed it, it is at the discretion of the judge, the bail issue. And the judge told them, Yes, you said this guy is not healthy. But the evidence you have presented has not convinced me. Go and present other evidences. We have gone to court. We have gone to town. So I, I think the lawyers need to apply the bricks because if they are destroying that their constituency, some of us will be very happy. And you know the reason why I'm happy? When the social media guys took over our business as a journalist, I felt bad. <laughs> I, was, I, was, I am a trained journalist. I know the sanctity of the truth when you are disseminating information. But some guys, because you have access to telephone, you can buy data, you have become a journalist. Without observing, observing the rules, the lawyers are giving them the go-ahead, aiding them. I am happy. So I think there's a need for Nigerians to apply the brakes. Because the when, not happy. 
I'm happy that it's happening to them <laughs> because biased. because when it was happening to us, they were prodding those guys on that it is freedom of expression. As if Section 45 does not even I, 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 I put a limit to this freedom we are talking about. The question is the one that is guiding everybody. All the freedoms you can think you have in this world have been abridged by Section 45. There's a limit to freedom. So, on the case of the lawyer, mm -hmm. the judge have told them, go and bring for the evidence that will convince me that truly this guy is sick. Why would I deny him bail? So, I think instead of all this, uh, like fella will say, perambulation, let us face the real issue. Because while the lawyers are coming on television, are coming in front of principals, blowing grammar, but the lingo is in detention. They will be celebrating the Christmas with their wives. I think what should be the concern of a good lawyer is how to get his client out of problem, not to create problem for him. I think that should be the primary responsibility of a lawyer. So the Let lawyers do right the now, uh, he, this is a direct... Let them do the deed This is a direct slap on your face. Yeah. You are part of the problem, he's yes. saying. Well, I, I, I think he might be putting too much on the lawyers because lawyers are the ones who go to court and understand what happens behind the I scenes. I think I'm going to enjoy this. And most times, what happened, what happened behind the scenes tends to cloud the minds of uh, persons who are paid before the court. So I would not know the information that the, some lawyers who have come to... Uh, to the media and describe what is happening at the Insta, what has been the treatment said to your client as a clear case of, um, um, should I say, persecution. I would not know those, those facts. But there are cases where you can see a clear court case of you haven't done all that you should do to secure freedom for your client. But then certain powers elsewhere clogs the whole process. So in, that, in such situation, you won't blame the lawyers when they resort to the media to put the pressure on the government. And we see that paying off today with the AGF asking, in the case of Shore, that the file be sent to his offices. So with, with such step, which was, which was uh, to a great extent, uh, 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 I say, uh, aided by the pressure on the Will media. Will that be for the greater good? Of course. That's the question. Of course. Oh, okay, that's that the question. But we have seen a step. We'll keep in view. Of course. <laughs> we'll keep that in view. Certainly. Well, ladies and gentlemen, it's been a very interesting conversation, but we have to go. Thank you very much, um, Dikbo Olayoko, political analyst, Raymond Kanebe, uh, legal practitioner. Thank you, gentlemen. You we'll keep our fingers good. crossed and we'll uh, keep watching. And please don't be biased against social media. We feel bad, too. I feel very, bad, very too. very, annoying. Because I mean, there's no fact-checking. There is, I mean, I know, but that's a... The sanctity of truth. That, that is a discussion we will have another day. Okay. Yes. <laughs> All right. <laughs> well, thank you for staying with us. We'll take our plus package now. And when we return, I'll be giving you my take. Stay with us. The House of Representatives has resolved to investigate the alleged invasion of the Federal High Court in Abuja by officials of the Department of State Services, DSS. The House mandated its committees on national security and intelligence, judiciary, and human rights to investigate the incident, saying the intelligence agency desecrated the sanctity of the judiciary. The motion was raised by the minority leader of the House, Ndudi Elumelu. Such a nation should be completely discouraged. The House is further worried that if this action is not properly put to check, the National Assembly may one day be evaded and the relevant security agencies will claim not knowing who the offenders are. The House is aware that the evasion of the Federal High Court Abuja runs contrary to the avowed assurances of the President of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. Further aware that the physical assaulting of Mr. Shore and his co-defendant Bakari by the year to be identified persons inside the courtroom is the highest act of sacrilege against the judicial arm of government and a complete disrespect to the rule of law. We'll refer it um, to the three committees, a Committee on National Security and Intelligence, uh, Justice and Human Rights, matter referred. It's time for my take. Now, I'm very sad that many young people in Nigeria are, are, are lending a hand to the foolery being played by some of our politicians. You are the leaders of tomorrow. We've heard this. Yes, we know, but we need to start now. Yet, we still accept to be used as thugs and assassins and criminals by the people we have, who have refused to lead this country into greatness. The main reason why the rift between the governor of Edo State and um, the party leader of the APC Adams, Shomole, holds water today is because 
the young people in Edo State have not or have made themselves available to play, you know, in this game. Dear Nigerian young person, your future, our future, the future of Nigeria is in your hands. I think if you really realize how big a responsibility this is, we will not play with it. And now moving to Cross River State, keeping people locked up because they're criticizing the government is unacceptable. Unfortunately, this is the reality of Odok and Jalingo, but because when power is absolutely corrupt. So what is the solution to putting a permanent stop to this? Make the judiciary as independent as possible so it does not have to bow to the whims and caprices of those in the executive and also dear Nigerians. Let's vote into power, people of substance, people who will move this country forward. Do not vote them because you like them for your own selfish reasons. Because Nigeria is a great country and we are Nigeria. I am Mary Anacone and it's been Plus Politics.